but works. In this video, we are going to take a look at all status resistance, exotic damage resilience, and the individual status resistances. We wanted to know how it works and if it's worth to roll on your gear at all. If you do too, then stick around. What was the resistance? What is it now? And how does it work? To fully understand, you first need to know that there are a few types of status effects. I'm not going to list them assuming that you know which types exist, but I'll give you one example. Being set on fire is a status effect on you. This is where resistances come in. You would not... Resistances used to have a random effect, like a dice roll. If you had 40% resistance, it would roll a dice and if you had 40% resistance, you would not get hit 4 out of 10 times. Meaning, not being set on fire instead of, yes, being set on fire. This was too random, so in patch 1.6, resistance bonuses lowers the effect of the status effect by its percentage instead of just cancelling it out. Minus 40% resistance means minus 40% less burn damage, if we're talking about fire still. And duration. It doesn't only affect the damage, it actually affects the duration. And if you make it up to 100%, it actually cancels it out. It will no longer have an effect on you, and anyone trying to apply it to you will see a resisted message in the combat text. They have also added diminishing returns for status effect. Whenever status effect hits you, you build up a certain amount of temporary resistance. I'm not really sure how much or how long, but knowing that once you get hit by fire, fire does less is what you need to know. <clears throat> now that we've had the intro, I'm going to list the three types of defenses against status effects, explain how they work, and end with an example. Let's start with all status resistance. All status resistance determines how long you are affected and damaged by any status effect. And with 100% you would be immune to any status effect. However, you can only go up to 26% with this stat at the moment. The 100% the is actually quite similar to the immune mod on the support station. Next to all status resistance, there is specific status resistance, which behaves the same as all status resistance, however just for a specific status. These stats are mainly found on the knee pads, some roll on the backpack and mask, but this is only for specific ones. The maximum amount varies per specific one. The highest you can get is for burn resistance, which goes up all the way to 92%. The lowest is shock resistance, which only goes up to 58. The other specific ones all get 75 at best. And don't forget, it behaves exactly the same as the other one, the all status resistance. And now for a different kind of defense against this. It's called exotic damage resilience. Exotic damage resilience mitigates all status effects. So effectively, any damage that's not from a bullet. Weirdly enough, it seems similar to the all status resistance. However, we think exotic damage resilience doesn't reduce the duration of the status effect, but it only decreases the damage taken. If you were able to get 100% though, you would also be immune. But for balancing purposes, it only goes up to 42.5%. You could say exotic damage resilience is similar to armor, but for status effects. Now that you know how the stats work, let's take a look at the meta. At the moment, you'll find a lot of fire and bleed status effects. As exotic damage resilience and all status resistance seem so similar, we think it's a fair assumption to say that they are the same, and that you can combine them to counter all effects. To truly find out how much you can stack, let's crunch the numbers. Let's start with a hypothetical fight, so fictional numbers for the damage but the maximum resistance and resilience. I've picked fire status. 
Its duration is going to be 4 seconds, and its base damage is going to be 100,000. Now, first off, we are going to take off the, enemy, uh, the exotic damage resilience, which is a maximum of 42.5%, so 100,000 minus 42.5%, which brings the damage down to 57,500 damage, still a duration of 4 seconds. Now, the all status resistance which is a maximum of 26%. Taking that off, you're now dealing 42,500 damage over the course of 3 seconds, since the resistance actually reduces the effect time. And lastly, the specific resistance. Assuming that you have built the maximum amount, you'll have 92%, which is, which is absolutely an overkill and insane to do, but imagine you'd have it. Reducing the time to less than a second and the damage down to only 3000, since it's so close to 100%. The thing is, is that you'd need 100% in just one of the stats to be immune. Having a lot of percentages spread over all these stats are not going to make you immune. It's just going to reduce the damage a lot. However, I'm not entirely sure if the all resistance if the all status resistance actually adds up to the specific ones, or if they stay separate. I couldn't find this, so if you guys have any experience on this, please let me know, because I really want to know myself. But I do know that the exotic damage resilience and the status resistance do not add up. I really hope this video is making sense so far. I'm trying to be as clear as possible to explain it to you guys. With the numbers and the mechanics out of the way, I'd like to make some conclusions on the current meta. These stats seem like a good thing, and it's definitely not a bad thing to have, though it's not worth your time. Overall, the other stats that this game has to offer are just way better, and of course I'd advise you to have some of these stats. They might as well be the right ones. So, since knee pads is for sure to roll some of these specific stats, I try and go for bleed or burn resistance, since these are the most commonly found in the current meta. Since both all status resistance and enemy damage resilience are found on the major attribute rolls, these are simply not worth it, even though they are the most efficient resistance. They have to fill a major slot. Comparing this to, for example, health or skill haste, it's just not worth it, since the status effects are such a tiny part of the game. However, having a few minor stat rolls into specific resistances can help you out quite a lot. Against, for example, Predator's Mark or Firecrest. And one thing I'd like to mention as well is that Disrupt is for EMP, Disorient is for gas grenades, and shock is obviously for anything that is electronic. And the blind death resistance is for flashbangs and the toxic talent on snipers. All in all, resistance is useful, but after you've got your main stats on god tier. Anyway, since this is the difference between being burned for 4 or 2 seconds in PvP in the end, it might be worth it, but only if you got all your other stuff sorted out. For PvE, don't even bother. It's not worth it. I hope this video helps you understand how these stats behave in the game, and for you to understand why they are useful or not. Well, mostly not. Check out some of our other videos. We've made some videos about firearms, about toughness, and about skill power to improve your build. It's been your boy, what's up, on the Mastermind channel, and if it was helpful, don't forget to leave a rating, or not, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.